Do coffee grounds work as a soil amendment? Should you put your grounds in the ground? Hi, this is Matt and welcome back to Soil Lab. Today I want to introduce you to our new series and this is the Does It Work Soil Amendment series. Throughout this series, we're gonna look at several different soil amendments and track their nutrient release over time. So some of the amendments we're gonna be starting out with are gonna be coffee grounds, eggshells, azomite, kelp, and green sand. We'll also be adding extra treatments as you request them through time. So follow along over the next couple of weeks and I'll look forward to showing you what nutrients can come from these products in your garden. In today's segment of Does It Work, we're gonna be looking at the use of coffee grounds as an addition to our raised gardens. So what we did is we just took our coffee grounds straight from the filter, laid these out on a cookie tray, and let them air dry for a day or two. Once they were air dry, we just took them in the bag and brought them back down here to the lab. We're gonna use one level scoop of these coffee grounds and apply it to uh, one of our, our simulated raised beds. The other, that's gonna be an untreated control that we're going to track through time as well. One level scoop is a, equivalent to about 4% of the volume of this raised bed. Now, if you're Googling around and trying to find recommended rates for coffee ground applications, you're gonna see that they're kinda all over the board. So we just chose a volumetric rate um, that we thought would be reasonable and typical uh, for a raised bed. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to the soil surface now. And you can see this is gonna be a pretty good covering over your soil surface. Maybe you've went outside of your home and went to your local coffee stand and gotten coffee grounds from them for a larger situation. A lot of times they're very willing to donate those coffee grounds. Now that we've applied that somewhat evenly to our soil surface, we're gonna go ahead and just incorporate that in. As we do this, we're going to make several passes just as if we were in our garden. Now that we have that well incorporated into the, to the top quarter to half of an inch, we're going to go ahead and water that in. So now I have this small experiment in front of me. Let's go ahead and just recap what we're doing. We've got our typical garden soil in each of these two simulated raised beds. The first uh, raised bed situation, we have nothing added. In the next raised bed, we have our garden soil with 4% by volume coffee grounds added. What we're gonna do next is we're going to water in the untreated control as well as the coffee grounds and keep those moist for the duration of the study. All right, so the results are in for our Does It Work Soil Amendment Series video. So let's go ahead and pull up our My Soil dashboard here, and we're gonna go ahead and compare that untreated soil to our coffee grounds added soil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that untreated soil, as well as that soil that had the coffee grounds added, and we're just gonna simply compare those selected samples. Now here, you can see a few of these are off the charts, and so we started with a lot of nutrient and ended with a lot of nutrient. One of the first differences that I'd like to point out is in nitrogen. And as all of us know, nitrogen often is king. When we add these coffee grounds, we think of that as almost an organic fertilizer because really the carbon to nitrogen ratio that's estimated at about 20 to one tells us that it should be giving us some nitrogen. But when we look here, we see actually that almost the opposite is true. We see our nitrogen reduce pretty significantly after those coffee grounds were added. So let's remind ourselves what did we do? We had an untreated control. We did nothing to that. We just kept it moist and warm. The other, we added coffee grounds, also kept it similarly moist and warm. And then after two weeks of sitting, we pulled the soil samples and now we're looking at those results. So why did we see a reduction in nitrogen when we actually added coffee grounds? Well, we have to think about how that organic nitrogen becomes available. We have to rely on our soil microorganisms to break those compounds down and then yield nitrogen. What we suspect happened here with these coffee grounds is that although they have a relatively low carbon to nitrogen ratio, our soil microorganisms, those bacteria, those fungi, they needed to borrow some nitrate and ammonium from the soil environment so they had enough to break down that carbon. 
What that ends up leading to is what we would term a nitrate depression. Now through time, I would expect that that nitrogen would come back. But this would explain why if you added only coffee grounds at seeding to say your lettuce, you might see a reduction in your germination rate of those lettuce plants initially. That's because some of that nitrates being tied up by those microorganisms initially at the same time that your lettuce seedlings need them. Oregon State University saw the same thing. Now, if we were to run this study out farther, what we would see is that that nitrogen that was initially immobilized would be mineralized. It would be made available again as ammonium and then nitrate. So what does that tell me from a gardening perspective? I probably don't wanna add just coffee grounds right at seeding. If I'm adding those coffee grounds, knowing that it's gonna to lead to that initial nitrate depression, I just need to supplement with a readily available nitrogen source, and that could be inorganic or otherwise, just to supplement at that point in time before that mineralization occurs later during your growing season. Now here, let, just going back to our sample comparison, we see that our phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur those are literally off the chart right now, so we'll look at that data here in a moment. But I do think it's worth noting that we did see increases, albeit small, in our available calcium from those coffee grounds, our available magnesium, and a pretty significant increase in several of our micronutrients, including iron, manganese, and zinc. Now maybe you've heard that coffee grounds are pretty acidic. We observed the soil pH to see if that was true for us too. Now you can see here that pH was slightly reduced, but really not that significantly so. When we look at the data, we'll see it was about 0.05. Now we've heard coffee grounds are acidic, but there's a lot of studies, this one included, that really shows us that our coffee ground pH comes in at near neutral numbers, so right around seven. So now that we see that a lot of these nutrients are already high, let's go ahead and dive into the data and we'll see just how much they were shifted numerically. So here, what I'm looking at on the left is the data for our untreated soil. And on the right, it's our coffee grounds plus soil. These are the same soil test reports that I selected earlier on the MySoil dashboard and compared. So here on the left, you can see uh, that difference that I noted on pH first. In our untreated soil, that pH was just about 6.7, which is really near optimal from a nutrient availability standpoint. We did see an ever so slight reduction when we added the coffee grounds. Like I mentioned, it was about 0.05 uh, difference at 6.66, still in that sweet spot, still that optimal pH uh, for nutrient availability and for the production of most of our garden plants. Earlier, when we were looking at our comparison chart, it just looked at nitrogen. But I really think it's important that we point out which form of nitrogen. Maybe you recall that I mentioned a nitrate depression period. Let's just see how that nitrate, that anionic or negatively charged available form of nitrogen changed. So we see here in our untreated soil that our nitrate nitrogen was just over 63 parts per million. Now that's the form of nitrogen that not only our plants prefer to absorb, but also that our bacteria and fungi and other soil organisms prefer to consume. So when we look at the coffee ground added nitrate nitrogen, it's at 18 parts per million. So we saw a significant reduction in the nitrate form of nitrogen, but as you'll see, we're just about 2.8 and 2.4 on our ammonical forms of nitrogen, so it was relatively stable between the two. With our three primary macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, we've already really discussed nitrogen. We saw that pretty significant reduction, especially in that nitrate form. Well, how did it change for phosphorus and potassium? So you can see that with the phosphorus, we saw an ever so slight increase of about five parts per million, but an increase nonetheless. Potassium, we saw an increase also of about 10 parts per million from 422 to 432. Now, I think it's notable that we did see increases in phosphorus and potassium, whereas we didn't with nitrogen, but in this garden soil, those, those nutrients would not have become limiting factors. Although we saw it on the comparison chart in a graphical format, we may as well look at the numbers since we're in a lab. We'll see that the calcium also numerically increased by, oh, about 30 parts per million. So a pretty significant increase in that calcium from the addition of our coffee grounds. We also saw increases in magnesium of about 10 parts per million as well. So after adding the coffee grounds, we saw pretty significant increases uh, in calcium and magnesium, and I would say slight increases in phosphorus and potassium. 
As I look at our micronutrients, there's one in particular that jumps out at me, and that's because it was low. So in our untreated soil, our iron levels were low or suboptimal. You can see that the target range we're looking for here is between three and 10 parts per million, and we were sitting at about 2.4. So clearly the hope is that these soil amendments would supply that iron. And in this case, the case of adding coffee grounds, they certainly did and brought that actually above our optimal range to about 12 and a half with the upper end of that optimal range being 10. So what does this all tell me? This tells me that if I'm gonna add coffee grounds directly to my garden, I wanna be sure to supplement with an available form of nitrogen to avoid that nitrate depression. But I also need to know that it's going to give me a little phosphorus, a little potassium, but I think most importantly, it could give us a really good bump in iron, which isn't always in an available form. Iron is prolific in the soil environment, but it's often tied up or bound up by other elements. It appears that coffee grounds on their own can significantly increase our available iron levels within a two week window at or near seeding. So at the end of the day, the question ultimately is, does it work? So do coffee grounds work? What do you think? I'd love to see it in the comments below. But I'm gonna tell you that I think coffee grounds are a great addition to your garden, your lawn, your compost pile, your vermicompost bin, as long as we understand those nutrient release curves. So remember, if we're adding coffee grounds to the garden, rest assured you're getting plenty of iron, but you're gonna to need to supplement with nitrogen. Now follow along as we go and look at these other comparisons between that same untreated soil and these other soil amendments. So like you see here, we're going to be looking at the azomite additions. We're going to be looking at green sand additions. We just wrapped up looking at our coffee grounds and we're going to also be looking at eggshells and kelp meal and looking at very similar comparisons to today. Follow along and I hope that this helps drive decisions in your garden or even in your compost. Thanks and I look forward to seeing you in the lab.